Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There has never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. We know that the veil is being lifted. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, and Jews in Israel are being saved like never before. There is a revival. There is a hunger for truth. All glory goes to the King of Kings and Lord of Lord, Jesus Yeshua. We're small people with a big gut. When we study the Word of God, it's important to study the Word of God in context and not to pull a Bible verse here and a Bible verse there to suit our own needs. And the only way we can read the Bible in the correct context and understand it is by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to understand what the Word of God is saying. And for this reason, Jews who do not believe in Yeshua and Jesus study the Bible under rabbinic interpretations. They use interpreters like Rashi and Radak. They have books that interpret the books and books that interpret the books that interpret the books, like the Talmud, like the Gemara, like the Zohar, and many other books like it. This is the enemy's tool of keeping Jews away from the written word of God because the enemy knows that the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, and I'm paraphrasing, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if he can get the Jews out of the word of God, he thinks he can get them out of salvation. This is why it's so important that the gospel be preached. This is why it's so important that the gospel must go forth in these end times. This is why it's so important that we don't follow the rabbis and rabbinic Judaism, but we preach the gospel to them. Loving the Jewish people doesn't mean we follow them. We follow only Yeshua, Jesus, the Word, John 1.14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and tabernacled among us. He is the Word. He is the way. He is the truth. No one makes it to the Father, but only through Him. Yes, we love the Jewish people. Yes, we love the nations, but we cannot love people over righteousness. Before I was a believer in Yeshua, I grew up in a family of rabbis, Orthodox rabbis. And one of the biggest Bible verses that has been abused by the rabbis who don't believe in Yeshua is Exodus chapter 23, verse 19. And I'll paraphrase it. You shall bring the choice first fruits of your soil into the house of the Lord your God. You are not to boil a young goat in the milk of its mother. And the rabbis and the Jewish people who do not believe in Yeshua, and unfortunately, even some people that do believe in Yeshua, have taught that this Bible verse means that you can't eat milk and meat together. But that is not what the Bible verse is saying. The context here is a different context. It speaks about idol worship. Because at that time, the Israelites were following a lot of pagan traditions. And one of the pagan traditions was to boil a young calf in the mother's milk. And God said, don't do that. It has nothing to do with eating milk and meat. But the Orthodox rabbis, the Sanhedrin, lack of something that you and I have. And that's called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And when you attempt to read these Bible verses without the Holy Spirit, you're going to invent a religion. And that's what happened. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. There's an account in the Bible where Abraham meets the angel of the Lord, which we know as Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, and he prepares a meal with milk and meat. Now, if God would intend that we cannot eat milk and meat, why would Abraham do that? And why would the Bible say that Abraham believed God and it was account to him for righteousness? Because Abraham brought the best he can for the meal with the Lord with milk and meat. And the reason is because Exodus 23 verse 19 has nothing to do with eating milk and meat. This has been used right here in Israel as a powerful evangelistic tool. We're seeing salvation after salvation after salvation. All glory goes to Yeshua, Jesus. When they begin to see that Abraham ate milk and meat, it shocks them. This eventually drives them to the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach and the Holy Spirit can open their eyes to the truth that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Yeshua is the Messiah. Yeshua died on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day. And by his blood, all who repent and believe have full redemption of sins and eternal life. As the team were praying, I began sharing and asking people, can we eat milk and meat according to the Bible? I was on my way from the old city to enter the Kotel area, the Western Wall, when I was approached by a known rabbi from Jerusalem, Harav Spiegel Amsalem. Rabbi Spiegel Amsalem. I immediately recognized him. 
He approached me. I asked him, are you Rabbi Shpigel Amsalem? He said, yes. And he said, I know who you are. And I know what you're coming here to do. And you're not going into the Kotel Western Wall area to speak to the people. I'm asking you to leave right now, Zev. If you don't leave, I will cause a riot over here and you'll be attacked. Just leave quietly. Don't go into the Kotel area. I told Rabbi Spiegel, I'm not leaving anywhere. I have a question to ask you. He said, I don't want to hear your questions. I know where your questions are going. I said, no, I want to ask you a question about eating. He said, what do you want to ask me about eating? Can I eat milk and meat together? Chas v'shalom, he said. God forbid, it's not allowed. I said, where does it say it's not allowed? He immediately said, the rabbis explain Exodus 23, verse 19 in the Talmud. And the Talmud says, you cannot eat milk and meat together. I told Rabbi Spiegel, let's open Exodus 23, verse 19. We don't need a Talmud. We don't need a man-centered book. All we need is a revelation from God. He said, after we read this together, you're going to leave the area? I said, if you can prove to me that you're right and I'm wrong, I'll leave the area. Rabbi Spiegel and Salem liked the challenge and said, okay, let's read it. Praise Yeshua. I turned the Bible to Exodus 23, verse 19, and read in Hebrew together with Rabbi Spiegel and Salem. The best of your first fruits of your ground you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in the mother's milk. Rabbi Spiegel was very happy. He said, you see, right there it says you can't do it. You can't have milk and meat. I asked Rabbi Spiegel, the best of the first fruits, who is that brought for? He said, it's brought to God. I told him the context of the mother's milk in the young goat is speaking about idol worship. Because at that time, because of the paganism, many of the Israelites were doing those pagan rituals. And God said, don't do that. Rabbi Spiegel had nothing to say. The Holy Spirit was working on him. I then asked Rabbi Spiegel, was Abraham righteous? He said, Abraham was a great man. I said, would Abraham eat milk and meat? He said, never. And one of the reasons he, was, he said never is because they don't read their Bible. They read rabbinic interpretations. I told Rabbi Spiegel, I'm going to show you something in the Bible. I opened the Bible to Genesis chapter 18, verse 8, and read together in Hebrew with Rabbi Spiegel. With Rabbi Spiegel. He then brought some curds and milk and a calf that had been prepared and set these before them while they ate. He stood near them under a tree. Here we see Abraham preparing milk and meat together and eating milk with a calf. How is that possible if you're not allowed to eat milk and meat together? Rabbi Spiegel was in complete shock. I read the verse again together with him. He just looked at it and didn't know what to say. We both agree that a righteous man in God's eyes would have not eaten milk and meat if it was against the word of God. And when it says righteous, it doesn't mean that he was righteous. It means that he abided in God and it was accounted to him for righteousness because all of us have fallen short of the glory. Only God is righteous. Only Mashiach is righteous. Do you know who he prepared this meal for? He said, no. Let's go back a few verses to Exodus chapter 18, verse 3 and see who he prepared the meal for. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. The word for Lord in Hebrew is Yehovah. It's God. So here you can see that the meal was prepared for God. Not only is it okay to eat milk and meat, but God honors it. Because God is not searching for religion. He's searching for a relationship. And that's why it's so important to be grounded in the word of God and not take Bible verses out of context. Rabbi Spiegel was holding his head. He couldn't believe his eyes. He then asked me a question. But how could it be that Abraham is eating with God? God is not a man. You're right. God is not a man. He's the angel of the Lord. He's the Messiah. He came in the flesh. At that moment, something supernatural happened. The prayers of the believers were working. The rabbi was glued to the ground. It was time for the full gospel. All these accounts in the Bible were just a foreshadow of Messiah Yeshua. Rabbi Spiegel said, I can have you killed for these words. I told Rabbi Spiegel, you might be able to, but you won't do it because you know the truth. I started to read Bible verses to him from Isaiah 53, from Micah 5.2. The rabbi just stood there holding his head and listening to the Bible verses. He couldn't move. Now you understand why the rabbis teach not to eat milk and meat together because the enemy is trying to take you out of the word of God to rabbinic books that you won't see these Bible verses, that you won't see that Abraham ate with the Lord, that you won't see that it's okay to eat milk and meat. 
You came to me here today. This is a divine appointment. You came to persecute me, to threaten me. But I'm here to tell you that God loves you. Yeshua loves you. He died on the tree on the cross for your sins. He rose on the third day. And by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins. And if you trust in him, you can have eternal life, just like Abraham did. And Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Doesn't say that he was righteous. It means it was accounted to him for righteousness. Because if you believe in Yeshua, in Jesus, he paid the price for you, and it's accounted to you for righteousness. I love you, Rabbi Spiegel, and God loves you. Not only am I not going to leave this area, I'm going into the Kotel area to continue to preach the truth. Rabbi Spiegel left the Kotel area and didn't do anything. Glory to Yeshua. We pray that he'll open the word of God, that he'll have visitations, that he'll have dreams, and come to know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. Yeshua is God, and that Abraham prepared a meal and ate together with the Lord. Hallelujah. We pray that they'll come to know that Yeshua is the Messiah. One thing is certain. Harav Spiegel, Rabbi Spiegel on Salem, and all those that heard the gospel will never be the same again. And for this, we give all the glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Yeshua. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And the word for salvation in Hebrew is Jesus. It's Yeshua, her Yeshua, like a blazing torch. And we know that he's coming back with fire in his eyes as the lion of the tribe of Judah to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will not keep silent and keep on preaching the gospel. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat sending you blessings from Jerusalem, Israel, in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Aryeh Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the great I am, Jesus Yeshua, amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah, amen. Amen.